Hey there guys, Adam Fishwick here. Uh, before I get started, I've just got myself a new video camera, so as you can see the quality is more better now. Anyway, um, here's my top 10 at night doctor uh, moments. Enjoy. At number 10 we get uh, Father's Day. This is a scene where the Ninth Doctor and Rose um, argue over that, that Rose can't rewrite history just to save her dad. Not one line. OK, look, I'll tell him you're not my boyfriend. When we met, I said, travel with me in space. You said no. Then I said, time machine. It wasn't some big plan. I just saw it happening and I thought, I can stop it. I did it again. I picked another stupid ape. I should have known. It's not about showing you the universe. It never is. It's about the universe doing something for you. So it's okay when you go to other times and you save people's lives, but not when it's me saving my dad. I know what I'm doing. You don't. Two sets of us being there made that a vulnerable point. But he's alive! My entire planet died. My whole family. Do you think it never occurred to me to go back and save them? But it's not like I've changed history. Not much. I mean, he's never going to be a world leader. He's not going to start World War Three or anything. Rose, there's a man alive in the world who wasn't alive before. An ordinary man. That's the most important thing in creation. The whole world's different because he's alive. What, would you have him dead? I'm not saying no, that. No, I get it. For once, you're not the most important man in my life. Let's see how you get on without me, then. Give me the key. The TARDIS key, but I'm so insignificant. Give it me back. All right, then I will. Well, you've got what you wanted, so that's goodbye, then. You don't scare me. I know how sad you are. You'll be back in a minute. Will you hang around outside the TARDIS waiting for me? And I'll make you wait a long time! At number nine, we're getting a doctor saving everyone from the virus nanogenes. What are you doing? Software patch. Gonna email the upgrade. You want moves, Rose? I'll give you moves. Everybody lives, Rose. Just this once! Everybody lives! At number eight, we get the Doctor telling Rose who he really is. Really though, Doctor, tell me, who are you? You know, like we were saying about the Earth revolving. It's like when you're a kid. The first time they tell you that the world's turning and you just can't quite believe it because everything looks like it's standing still. I can feel it. The turn of the Earth. The ground beneath our feet is spinning at a thousand miles an hour. And the entire planet is hurtling around the sun at 67,000 miles an hour, and I can feel it. We're falling through space, you and me, clinging to the skin of this tiny little world, and as we let go, that's who I am. Now forget me, Rose Tyler. Go home. At number seven, the Daleks are threatening the Doctor because they have Rose as a, as a hostage. Will you? That's nice. Hello. The Dalek stratagem fears completion. The fleet is almost ready. You will not intervene. Oh, really? Why is that then? We have your associate. You will obey or she will be exterminated. No. I said no. What is the meaning of this negative? It means no. But she will be destroyed! No! Because this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to rescue her. I'm going to save Rose Tyler from the middle of the Dalek fleet. And then I'm going to save the Earth. And then, just to finish off, I'm going to wipe every last stinking Dalek out of the sky! But you have no weapons, no defenses, no plan! Yeah. 
And doesn't that scare you to death? Rose? Yes, Doctor? I'm coming to get you. At number six, the Doctor managed to get uh, Cassandra back to Satellite 3 and let her die. Oh, you should have seen it. Last human. So, you passed my little test, bravo. This makes you eligible to join um, the, the, the human club. People have died, Cassandra. You murdered them. It depends on your definition of people. And that's enough of a technicality to keep your lawyers dizzy for centuries. Take me to court then, Doctor, and watch me smile and cry and flutter. And creak. And what? Creak. You're creaking. What? I'm drying out. Oh, oh, sweet heavens. Moisturize me. Moisturize me. Where are my surgeons? My lovely boys. It's too hot. Oh, you raise the temperature. Oh, have pity. Moisturize me. Oh, oh, doctor. Oh, oh doctor. Help oh, her. Oh, everything has its time and everything dies. Oh, I am too young. At number five, the doctor is asking the people if anything has fallen from the sky. It's more of a funny scene, this. Excuse me, excuse me. Can I have everybody's attention just for a mo? Uh, be very quick. Uh, hello. Um, might seem like a stupid question, but has anything fallen from the sky recently? <laughs> I said something funny. It's just there's this thing that I need to find. Would have fallen from the sky a couple of days ago. Would have landed quite near here. With a very loud. Quickly as you can. Down to the show. At number four, we get the doctor telling the uh, gas mask people to go to their room. Go to your room. Go to your room. I mean it. I'm very, very angry with you. I'm very, very cross. Go to your room! At number three, the doctor has just found out that, that there was a transmat bin inside his TARDIS. Don't tell me you've got a garden. No, I've just got the TARDIS. I remember. That's the amnesia. So what happened? Where did they get you? We just left Raxacorico Fallopatorius and then we went to Kyoto. That's right. Japan in 1336. And we only just escaped. We were together and we were laughing and then there was this light. This white light coming through the walls, and then I woke up here. Yeah, that's the transmat beam. That's how they pick the housemates. Oh, Linda with a Y. Sweet little Linda. It's worse than that. I'm not just some passing traveller. No stupid little transmat gets inside my ship. That beam was 15 million times more powerful, which means. This isn't just a game. There's something else going on. Well, here's the latest update from the Big Brother house. I'm getting out. I'm gonna find my friends. And then I'm gonna find you. At number two, uh, the doctor just found out that there's another Dalek alive after the events of the Time War. 
Look, I'm sorry about this. Mr. Van Staten might think he's clever, but never mind him. I've come to help. I'm the doctor. on fire. The entire Dalek race wiped out in one second. You lie! I watched it happen. I made it happen! You destroyed us! I had no choice. And what of the time, Lords? dead. They burnt with you. The end of the last great time war. Everyone lost. And the coward survived. Oh, and I caught your little signal. Help me, poor little thing. But there's no one else coming because there's no one else left. I alone in the universe. Yep. So are you. We are the same. We're not the same, I'm not... No, wait. Maybe we are. You're right, yeah, okay. You've got a point. Because I know what to do. I know what should happen. I know what you deserve. Exterminate. Why should I? You never did. At number one, uh, this is the Doctor confronting the Dalek after the many deaths it caused did. gonna get rusty. I bet of the DNA of Rose Tyler. Extrapolating the biomass of a time traveler regenerated me. What's your next trick? I have been searching for the Daleks. Yeah, I saw. Downloading the internet. What did you find? And? Nothing. Where shall I get my orders now? You're just a soldier without commands. Then I shall follow the primary order, the Dalek instinct to destroy, to conquer. What for? What's the point? Don't you see it's all gone? Everything you were, everything you stood for. What should I do? 
right now. If you want orders, follow this one. Kill yourself. The Daleks have failed. Why don't you finish the job and make the Daleks extinct? Rid the universe of your filth. Why don't you just die? You would make a good Dalek. See the boss. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Uh, please give a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll also be doing a top 10 10th Doctor moment and also check out all things Doctor Who. Uh, we'll be reviewing a school reunion. Until next time guys, peace.